good uh, morning, evening, a global warm welcome to our seventh community design chat here on Instagram Live. Um, this is our first chat on design for health or more um, particularly on design for mental health. And um, this is a two-way chat. So in a moment, we'll be um, having Matthijs van Dijk joining us in this conversation. It's his first live stream. So I'm very excited to try new things with um, people that I know from my network. And I'm based in Amsterdam. I'm doing this for the Design Lab in San Diego, the Design Lab that has just won the bid for World Design Capital with Tijuana for 2024. I'm so happy for them. So those are the big news that I celebrate thousands of miles away as well. And I have the honor of uh, to host this chat um, for the Design Lab as a community builder, a community liaison. I've done this since 2015 when they were um, just founded and thinking about how to grow and be in this world. And uh, our chats are um, participatory. So anyone who's joining right now, I'm maybe waving at you. Um, feel free to ask your questions and critical questions, encouraging questions in this um, form here beneath in the comments. And if I don't respond right away, give me a moment. I will get back to them. I scan them as we speak. Today, we'll be talking about designing health during the pandemic also, because that's a, a context that we're looking at for the last one to two years. And um, let me invite our guest. Hi, Matthias. Hi. Thank you for your time on a probably busy Monday morning. Do you want to introduce yourself? I did a little bit of the introductions that you may have heard or not to the general series, to the first talk that we're holding today about design for health. Um, so, um, yeah, in your own words, um, please introduce yourself. Um, so I'm wearing a few hats, so I, I, I won't bore it too much with it, but it's, um, um, I'm founder of Reframe Studio. Um, I'm professor at Delft University of Technology and I'm professor in Norway at the NTNU. Um, and next to that, one of the founders of uh, Redesign Psychiatry, which is a collaborative between philosophers, psychologists, psychiatrists, designers, um, people who suffer from mental uh, disorders. Um, so it's a, it's a big group of people joining forces to think about the future of, um, um, of mental well-being. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so this is, yeah, this is just a sh short introduction who I am. So I think we have to move on to the content that's more important than myself. <laughs> No, but it's helpful for people to show that you have affiliation to different institutions. Yeah. That you are someone who's quite able to step into a role, to step out of it. And what I also gather is future. So anyone that's new to design, anyone that doesn't have a design background or, yeah, um, this a similar background to ours, this is really, is this about the future outlook or not? Yeah, it is. And, and I fully agree. So I, I have to t take my own kind of profession more seriously. So the thing is, so together, together with uh, my colleague in Delft, we've been working al already from, from 1992 on this, on this. So at first we didn't want to call it a new design methodology, but in the end it is a new design methodology. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a design methodology with which you um, can have more grip on the future and how to design for meaning and how to understand that what you're designing for is maybe not only to elicit individual concerns, but also collective concerns. Um, so it's about understanding society as a whole. It's about understanding that society in the future differ, might differ from the society as we know today. And yeah. therefore, before you start designing, it's really important that you uh, embrace that future understanding of society because otherwise, yeah, um, you don't know if what you come up with now is of meaning in the future. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's to create future proof or to avoid um, uh, outdatedness. I, I don't know how to say it, but, and, and of course, um, in principles to, um, to understand how to design for meaning, yeah. Um, you waved the pink book up, and I do have it here as well. Um, <laughs> when when I was handed this book, you joked and said this would be maybe also just a computer stand, but I do pop it open quite often. So what this book, I think, has, it's called VIP Vision in uh, Design. That, that's not a D, but a P. I love that. <laughs> 
Um, but it's really thinking about like what kind of future do we des want to design for? Not just need driven, request driven, problem focused, but like thinking big and wide. Yeah, exactly. It's it's about thinking about future possibilities instead of solving all problems of today. And and I'm I'm always a little bit joking. Like, if we would solve all problems of today, would we have created a society that matters? Um, and um, so I think it's really important that you understand what to, what to aim for instead to what to distance from. Uh, that's yeah. such a completely other way of thinking. And that's yeah. exactly also what we thought of um, in this field of psychiatry, where, of course, you can have a lot of critique on the current system. So maybe there's a lot of things you, 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 you might think it's easy to change, but maybe it's more important to design first a new alternative, a new... Um, perspective um, instead of trying to bash everything that you don't like in the current system. Um, and it's also also because of respect, I think, to the people now working in those systems uh, where sometimes they don't have, they, they, they are not empowered to change the system. So in that case, if you start to have a lot of critique on uh, therapies uh, that are being used nowadays, uh, a lot of people uh, have to work with them. So it's not even mm -hmm. their responsibility to, to, uh, to do what they have to do. Um, so therefore we say, okay, if we start from a blank sheet, what could be possible in the future? And, and um, what is in the end, so if, if we discover what's of meaning in the future, then we will maybe point out what the differences are with the current system or the, the, the current infrastructure about mental health care. Um, Let's um, give this some concreteness in your very concrete project. It is not on Reframing Studio, it's Redesigning Psychiatry. It has its own website. It has this co-designing team. It has yeah. a summer school. It has videos. So it's very rich and, yeah. and elaborate and went through many rounds of thinking. And it's give us an over um, maybe a tour for someone who doesn't know about the project. And the the image that I shared was hearing voices or taming voices. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that, that's, that that's in well. what it all started with, and that's uh, almost eight years ago. So the thing is, mm -hmm. when you start to design for society, and when you, when you really try to, as a designer, want to engage with these topics, you have to engage for a long time um, uh, on challenges like these. So mm -hmm. so so it all started eight years ago when. Uh, we got in touch uh, with someone working in the field of psychiatry uh, mm -hmm. and, and he was wondering how it would be when we would include design knowledge in his, uh, in his uh, discipline. Yeah. Um, and we started only with a very small um, assignment in relation to how big uh, psych psychiatry can all be about, but it was about um, uh, creating something for people who hear voices inside of their head mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to give them more control over it uh, mm -hmm. therefore to make it more easy for for those people to be part of society because now when they go out there so when they go out to buy um, uh, uh, some milk those voices they really um, are really violent and they they almost push you home Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we did a research on how does it work, how do those, how do those, those voices, how, so where, where do they come from um, and can't we do something with it? And we discovered that those voices you, you hear inside of your head are made mm -hmm. in the same area in your brain uh, where speech is created. Uh, and then we discovered, so if you start talking, so if you use that same um, area in your in your mind by by talking, you overload your short term memory, and therefore those um, inner voices disappear, which is very interesting. And then yeah. we thought of, can we do something with it? Um, and it was a kind of challenge to, of course, not ask people to start speaking out loud because that would be very strange as well when you would be in an environment. But then we discovered there's a small word game. So there's it's it's like a jackpot like two mm -hmm. rows of of words in this case not images one goes up the other goes down and it so each row consists out of words and you have to say if 
the jackpot comes, um, sorry, stands still or is stopping if the combination of the word made sense. So if, for instance, a uh, rabbit tree doesn't make sense, but uh, um, uh, carrot tree or carrot whatever could make sense. The funny thing, if you look for, if the two words together make meaning, you say like, unconsciously you say the word inside of your head and mm -hmm. therefore you use the same area and therefore you lose you overload the system and therefore you do not hear your own voices anymore which is fantastic so what i love with this example already is there is this optimism and hope from designers that can do like uh, correct me if i'm wrong they might sometimes say they love a good wicked problem because yeah that's where the creative juices get flowing and and it's also very much already into into a prototype you, you created an app with this this is, this is a yeah. um, completed project eight yeah. years ago and yeah. anyone in the audience who is in design for help um, raise your hand give us a sense of um what your background is what your interest is in this but let's leap forward from this into co-design yeah. and psychiatry we will only brush on these topics but we want to direct people of course to your resources and and, and uh, finished projects so yeah what is the big next? How did the big next happen? Yeah, so so the thing is, so we were so successful with this with this, yeah, small thing to work on, and again, yeah. it's it's a joint effort where yeah. where psychologists become designers and designers become psychologists. So it's you learn from each other, and in in in, so me becoming a psychologist and psychologist become a designer, you can come up with these ideas. Yeah. Um, so the, the 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 one discipline is not more important than the other, um, mm -hmm. but we thought of okay, but then maybe we can do something that is bigger than the app for people hearing uh, voices inside of their head. Why can't we redesign the whole system? Mm -hmm. And the, and the funny thing is that um, we started, for instance, talking with the ministries. Uh, and we, we ask them, so are you interested in if you're going to do research on the future of psychiatry and how maybe a future mental health care system um, might look like? And it's really interesting how, how the ministry is really afraid for research because they said, hmm, we're not sure yet because we don't know the outcomes of the research. We agree, and, yeah. And that was, I think, where we where we understood, okay, those big societal issues we, we want to address. Um, um, maybe it's the responsibility now for completely other groups of people to start working on it. So it's not the ministry anymore yeah. who works on these issues, but it's a group of people who feel that we should do something about it. It's It's a type of activism, but not starting with the idea that everything is wrong, but that we should just put effort in it because it's so important. And the whole thing is, so we started to to initiate this whole project uh, from zero and we started to look for finances, not hmm. people who gave us an assignment. So hmm. we we're looking for people who had the same interest in understanding what could be of meaning and just mm -hmm. and again, what I said uh, previously, just where we could start with a blank sh uh, piece of paper, yeah. Um, so we could distance from all preoccupations that maybe uh, withhold us today to create something that maybe is meaningful mental health care. Uh, but but again, it's 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 this big story about being very ambitious. Yeah. Uh, understanding that you take a specific role for society, you organize a group of people and, and you try to get financed by institutes who feel that the research is necessary to start doing. Um, so I, what I gather from this is um, the ministry was maybe so enthusiastic in the beginning. Um, the fear of research um, may be understandable intuitively for any person um as well and um but then that you moved on with conviction with a vision again vision for something yeah. for a future and you said we're going to find the people that are in it so if i yeah. look at the team of redesigning psychiatry there's philosophers in there who else people that are 
private psychologists? Psychiatrists, psychologists. Um, there are people who, who are patients or mm -hmm. who suffer from uh, psych psychiatric disorders. Yeah. Uh, there's um, there's oh uh, there's transition management experts. Yeah. And then you have people who who do these things just in daily practice. But there's also a lot of professors from universities involved. So we always look for the combination between science on the one hand and practice oriented working on the other. And it's 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 the two legs of one of of, of one organism. So and we always look for. We see science as the means to prove that our ideas are right. So, mm -hmm. and that's so important, I think. And and so we created something. So as a relationship between science and practice, I think I think it's almost the ideal world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and in the beginning, so when we started the project. Uh, the research and the, and and the design or the more practice oriented work was more one, so it was really easy to sell to the world. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a later stage; we have more difficulties to keep on financing the research part of everything. But financing which, financing the research. Yes. Yeah. The the scientific research. Yeah. So all so so at the moment um, so um, so I have a role in in thinking about the future together with a few other people uh, within uh, redesign psychiatry, but at the moment I think it's very important that we safeguard research for the future, because that's mm -hmm. the easy thing to skip, isn't it? It's always so they say okay, uh, we want you to work on these kind of assignments. So. So, um, so with the visions you created, so we're doing a lot of projects now with mm -hmm. all the work we've, we've been doing. Um, um, but again, so we say that our lifeline is research. <laughs> um, but I mean, this is a great way to increase the um, exposure of this project again to different um, circles and networks. If there's a clear ask, we can also post this later if you're looking for funds for, yeah, research support on the order i think of several thousands i don't know if it's it's the students that you want what what sort of no no we're, we're, it's it's really high end um scientific research we're doing so yeah. it's it's on the forefront of what you see happening in the scientific world uh, yeah. so and that's why it's very important that there's professors involved who know what's happening uh, at the forefront but okay. but it's it's literally the the yeah the avant-gardeism um uh, under science, which which I think is great, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this topic, also health, mental health, especially, has always this connotation or this uh, topic also of stigma on it. Yeah. Um, can you tell talk a little bit about that? How you um, uh, prepared for that? How you're managing? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, how, yeah. How how you've encountered that in your in this project? Yeah, that's a really good question, and I hope I, I, my answer is. I can give a good enough answer because, again, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but I will do my best. The thing is, I think the most difficult thing in the current system is that treatment is often, treatment of um, uh, mental dis-well-being is often uh, linked to uh, mental disorders. So, yeah. so uh, before you know it, you are a person with a mental disorder. And what we wanted to do, we thought of that's really strange because then you you when you talk about treatment, it's it's all, almost also you and, and when you talk about we want to make people better or we want to give them a better health situation, mm -hmm. then it's almost saying that the situation they're in is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Or so it's really it's you it really implies a judgment it, exactly so it's you're you constantly having judgment without, yeah. yeah yeah and we wanted to do something different so we thought of so it's not that we are against disorders because in the end the disorder can be of help for someone who suffers from a specific uh, trauma for instance mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to create a new idea and we call it uh, i have to look because the the name is a little bit different in dutch than in, in english but we call it problem sustaining patterns yeah and, and we say that the this well-being of people is is there when there is patterns in interaction that are 
um, that people experience as undesirable. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we talk about these interactions, we say this is not only the interaction with yourself, but it can also be the interaction with another mm -hmm. person or your family. It can also be the interaction with the environment or with culture. So the yeah. culture you live within, or it can be even a relationship with time. Um, but the thing is, so first of all, we say those patterns, those problem-sustaining patterns, um, everyone, um, everyone living in this world has those problem-sustaining patterns. Mm -hmm. So there's not there's so so we we can't say you're healthy or not healthy because no everyone has to deal with problem sustaining patterns some yes. people can solve them themselves yeah they have the capability or they have or they have good friends and and they they move through these kind of stagnations and they they mm -hmm. move into another equilibrium so in in a lot of, in a lot of cases, I think people can do it themselves. But in some cases, those patterns are so severe, you need help from from the outside. And we what say, I really, yeah, what I really appreciate is the different language you're also putting to this. Like as as I am someone who has a background in psychology and then in yeah, family yeah. therapy, but I like the language of design for this too because it is problem sustaining mm -hmm. patterns. That's uh, that's that is completely effort. different as a, as a disorder. Everybody suffers from those problem-sustaining patterns. But when yes. you can't move through a stagnation yourself, you need help from the outside. Yeah. And that's what we call treatment. Yeah. Um, and then you can also say, yeah, so it, it is just something, it's, it is a life or a life related concept, the, the, the problem sustaining patterns. And the language yeah. is really, really important. And I follow uh, Richard Worthy here, who is saying, so the philosopher who is saying that a different language is more important for changing the world than having the good arguments. Um, yeah. If everyone starts using different words, you can distance from a preoccupation that relates to old words, isn't it? Um, so I think this is great to talk about. You met you. You address this in terms of um, the the stigma. The stigma of when you want to offer help, it immediately implies that someone is in need of help, um, has a problem, has disorder, and therefore treatment. So there are all kinds of traps or uh, intricacies, even linguistically, in this. What I wonder is, and this is part of this series, this community design chat series, is designing for health, but also designing during the new normal or designing with the pandemic in mind. Can you tell me a bit how that has shaped your project? Where maybe, um, I don't know how the beginning of this project coincided with the um, beginning of the pandemic, but this is a different current context. It's a different, yeah. yeah present to deconstruct uh, so yes so i think in in yeah how we live our lives now is different because of of wearing the masks and everything but in a way you can also say maybe it was already there but the contrasts now are much more um mm -hmm. visible um yeah. so i'm not sure if if of course, so my life looks a little bit different, but my relationship with my neighbor, um, so the things, so these things, that doesn't differ that much. The you relationship think they run deeper, or yeah, the, 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 and the, okay, and it becomes even more explicit. So if mm -hmm. if I like what I'm doing in relationship to my neighbor or not, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, so I think only so uh, so the vision we made um, so it, we published it in in two booklets. Um, mm -hmm. I think the the vision is not very much of of what we see happening now, but again, so in those specific behavioral um, on the, spe the, spe the specific behaviors we have to show now. Of course, I could never have predicted. No. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, so the, so the world for us. Um, so when we when we described it for 2035, we described it as a fluid world where there's no grip anymore. Um, mm -hmm. um, so it's 
again, it's not far off what I'm experiencing now with uh, because of the pandemic. Okay, that's also good to say. Um, it is maybe not impacted so much by it, if I understand this correctly. It is maybe heightened even or more exposed or... Yeah. But these problems are older and run deeper and longer than than something exactly exactly yeah. yeah. Well, so I, a question I always like to ask to the people I talk to, um, as you're you're not just uh, uh, a placeholder, you're an individual, you're person in this, you design with empathy. What about this project kept you going and motivated and 150% in it, or may not not? But what about this really relates to you as a unique individual in this design? Like it is. Um, an architect is in its business for different reasons, and you're in this um, complex societal, yeah. especially redesigning psychiatry for your own reasons. Is there something you can share about that? Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, um, I think, and, and that that also kind of relates to another project we're doing for another ministry, and the other ministry allowed us just to start doing the the research. Um, so that so it's not that that all the ministries don't like the research we 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 do and they they are not longing for the outcome even beforehand, but but that project rela uh, re uh, relates to the future of the rule of law and and it's also about democracy. Mm -hmm. um, and if you if you think about democracy and how we and if you think also about the rule of law, I think we 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 as a society do not understand anymore the, the basic meaning of it. So we understand the small little details of it because we're almost confronted. We're often when we're confronted with the rule of law, it's because we we had a speed ticket or or something stupid. Yeah. But when you think about the meaning of it, we don't have any answer. Mm -hmm. And I think so. That's going back to your question. Um, um, thinking of the rule of law, the future of the rule of law, thinking about democracy, I think it's very important. It's, it's not only minority um, deciding what to do, but it's minority also taking care of the, oh, the majority, sorry, the majority deciding what to do, but it's also the majority taking care of the minority. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I think this is exactly what we design psychiatry is all about is that you feel that in working in this project you embrace people that need support <laughs> um, they, they need to be seen and and it's not only that they have to so when they have a mental disorder that they have to work on their mental disorder no it's also us as a society that maybe have to adapt to them so so tying this to what what in this is coming from you so does this connect to your values that you believe exactly that we as 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 the majority have a responsibility towards a minority. Or yeah, in and to make it very personal, I think it, it has to do because I'm from an artist artist family, and of course there are minorities, and so they work the butt off, they, and they're not mm -hmm. being seen, they're not being acknowledged mm -hmm. by society. I think, so bottom line, I think this is what I'm defending. I'm defending mm -hmm. artists. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Through psychiatry. Uh, and through the projects that I do um, uh, on the rule of law. So I like, I thank you so much for sharing this. So if I understand this as people on the fringes, people as outsiders of the mainstream, they have a voice too. And how can we make them heard? How can we exactly. stand for and with them? And and um, I really connect to this topic also as a, as in terms of prevention. I really like this idea of going forward and addressing um, topics head on and fantasy on yeah yeah um, i'm coming from a family of lawyers and they were always uh, intervening when things were already at the uh, stage where people were fighting so i'm like no five steps earlier please prevention when things are smaller it's so much yeah. easier to tackle them right then then um yeah yeah no but and, and i think this links really beautiful to one of the the so we have three pillars in redesign psychiatry one of them is um, developing capabilities so yeah um, and, and one of them for, for, 
so one of the concepts is mental gymnastics. So we mm -hmm. teach people how to deal with the body, but not with their mind. So mm -hmm. why don't we have, why don't we teach children how to deal with frustration or negative emotions, things like that. Yeah. Um, and because, so in dealing with these negative emotions, of course, you, you understand also those patterns you're you you um you you maybe you want to break through huh? so the so so we say developing these capabilities is one of the big assignments for society um and then next to it we say we learn so much from science and from the past that so life events for instance are a a, a big um are often a starter for mental dis-well-being. So mm -hmm. marriage, uh, giving birth uh, to someone, um, um, uh, when you divorce, when people die. And the thing yeah. is, so that it is a kind of prevention. So you can create a safety net beforehand. So now we wait till someone um, um, in the end uh, 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 maybe has a completely breakdown because of, of whatever reason. But what we say, just create that safety net beforehand. And, and be, so we know that there's a lot of things going to happen with that person becoming a mother. So be, so already be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And if nothing happens, great. Uh, but if something happens, then there's something. Um, and then the third pillar, but so this is, so we say based on all the knowledge we have and all the data we have on life events, we have to be, we have to, to create these safety nets. Third is working on these, on a therapy where you can deal with those patterns you want to break through. Um, so there's interaction patterns um, that are undesirable. Um, and then we say people, they tell stories. So we say storytelling for people is very important because yeah. the, the story they tell about themselves is also can also be the means uh, to help them to create a strategy to move into another equilibrium. Um, yeah. So, you know, so it's, I think it's such a fantastic project and, and I feel a little bit strange um, telling this and then, knowing those people who were who worked so hard on all these concepts i just put on the table like oh yeah we have this concept we have this. so this is no, a lot of hard was... work of 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 30 40 people for six years okay so I, i'm so glad you um gave that credit um or i mean it's it's, it's all the story is told also on your website and you made this clear at every time we talked that you were just one person today representing the large team it was a co-designing effort but Thais, we need to wrap this up i want to respect your time it's end of the day you've given us a really good introduction you made it personal you gave us the pillars i think people will be heading to you over to your resources now i hope they will ask questions in the comments and one question is for the English speaking community. Is there plans to make this internationally more available in English or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a big dream. And tomorrow I have a meeting with an investor, an international investor. <laughs> um, so, so yes. And, and the good thing, it's a social investor. So, yeah. um, so yes, we are very ambitious, but on the other hand, we need to be realistic. And, yeah. and we worked... Uh, the last seven, six years uh, as a group of independent um, um, researchers and designers and makers. And now we said, okay, we need to be make it more explicit. So now we are uh, redesigning society foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a good starting point to also for ourselves to move to a new reality. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. We're in the middle of a transition ourselves. We're fighting with it. So how to deal with it? We're super ambitious. We see a lot of possibilities, but we, st <laughs> we still also know, oh my God. So how are we going to do but, it? I mean, this is what I love about this. This is you're as um, inspiring, as, as motivated as this book is pink, that you... Um, you have a big grand vision for this. So thank you for sharing this and really for giving it a face and a voice and, and a whole experience, right? Yeah. Rather than a flat digital um, 
front. Um, the doors are open. People, I hope, will be bugging you. And I'll, I'll create maybe five insight from this talk, what I learned that can be very different than what you learned from this talk or someone else that's watched this. But thank you so much. Okay. And congrats on your first live stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And thank well you done. so yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a really nice uh, morning over there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, yeah. Hello, San Diego. And good morning. Okay. Doing. Bye.